All right, and we're back for part uh, four, I guess this is. Um, okay, uh, here's uh, Serendi. Uh, now, I've got a pretty good mix of, of uh, gear on Serendi. Uh, it's basically all over the board, as you can see. I've got maces, I've got swords. Uh, I believe this boomerang's actually even a bow. Yeah. Uh, what's this? For, yeah, okay, so that's chest piece, and this is... Uh, that's the defense piece. Okay. Um, uh, Serendi's one of those great all-round characters. Uh, the best two-slot character for so many reasons that it just blows my mind. Now, if you have any pieces of equipment that increase movement by one, give it to Serendi. Uh, she, like, you're going to need her, her passive and her costume uh, for the maximum effects uh, of being able to take advantage of, of her movement ability. But the places that she goes with just the, like if you have the, the costume and, and her passive uh, going, um, the places where she can go with just that one extra movement put her in so many great positions to get a two for one right on her first turn uh, and hopefully tar charm to opponents. She is so useful in PvP. Um, I think I should probably mention by now that uh, everything that I'm talking about is purely PvP. The reason I'm not going to go into any PvE potentials like damage to boss or damage against Nepenthes and things like that is because they're just not useful in any way, shape, or form. As far as I've seen and what the game has to offer so far, there's nothing that you cannot beat with the best PvP potentials in PvE. There's nothing in PvE that's so impossible to beat that you need to have plus 100% damage to boss with the combination of all the percentages on all your things. Um, it'd be cool if they ever uh, opened up uh, a second uh, set of equipment things where you could equip basically all the same stuff. Uh, like you can double up uh, the gear that you have in your inventory, for example. You can equip a character this way, and then maybe you can... Uh, maybe just remove two sets on this on this uh, second way that you would equip it and put different ones in there. But Or even if they just gave you a second thing where you can equip your character for a different spec, that would be fine too, though it would just be very expensive. So you'd have a PvE and a PvP spec. Then everybody, I guess, would would want to stack attack damage to minion and attack damage to, uh, to boss would be the best. But... Uh, or Nepenthes if you're really having a hard time beating the Cuckoo Dungeons, but I have zero pro. I've got SS10 on, on, on Rock, Paper, and Scissor Cuckoo Dungeons. Uh, the Cuckoos have such huge weaknesses. The Rock one was pretty hard to beat uh, because they're, like, they have the best, <laughs> the best weakness. Stun only lasts for a turn, so <laughs> it's just not... It's not practical. Uh, like, you gotta have the luck to get the stuns off, and you have to have all your stunners go first. <sighs> uh, but looking at Serendi, very well balanced character, uh, because everything about her uh, is not balanced. <laughs> She's so strong. Um, I just some of the sets I have on here are just dumb luck. Uh, I didn't know that her extra one movement by having this equipment uh, on would be amazing. I just thought, okay, Serendi's going to suffer from movement because her movement's naturally very low. I should put this on her. And turns out it was so amazing, and my mind was blown by how good this was. Um, like if you get a, maybe two pieces like this, uh, just from dumb luck, like I did, then, then do it, uh, put them on. Uh, now I put this, uh, this ice set on just because I got a few of them when I was opening one packs, uh, one day, I think this was like, it's obviously a, so I was probably, I, I, I disenchanted so many pieces of this thing cause it was just filling up my inventory and I was getting pissed off. Uh, but, uh, the glacier accessibility and the hit rate are not bad uh, effects for a one-star piece. They're actually pretty good, because the Glacier accessibility makes uh, Serendi a, a champion on the ice map in PvP. Not only can she walk across the slump, swamp if she's in the two-spot or three-spot uh, in the corners so she can get to the center faster, but in the middle of the map where all the action's going to be going on, it's all Glacier, so she gets the, the bonus of, of the... Uh, uh, the accessibility there. Now something I'm not sure about is the glacier accessible. It basically raises the tile. So I think that it also gives you the terrain advantage at the same time, uh, but I could be wrong. Somebody correct me in the comments if, if it only just lets you be accessible. Uh, I think it does give you the terrain advantage too. So the, the extra damage from the terrain advantage definitely would make this uh, more worth it than most of the uh, the first star sets. 
though there are some pretty good one star sets. It's just for the most part, the, the really good effects don't come up until uh, the second uh, set. Um, now, going back to Serendi here, um, I have her built the way that I usually like to build characters. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm not a big fan of Dodge. Uh, I have shoes on her because the potentials on the shoes were amazing. So I thought, okay, well, keeping those, the damage taken and the dodge, extra dodge. The extra dodge just had good synergy with the fact that it was a pair of shoes. Uh, but the percent HP and the HP recovery every turn, those were the good things that I, I was really looking at this piece. Um, great for for any character. Uh, but uh, I have things built for Serendi especially to never miss uh, because dodge twinks are... Like a lot of people have them. Uh, it is mostly in the higher up ranks where people have, you know, a lot of money to invest in the gear to really maximize the the dodge on their characters. But or if they have like four ghost step sets, for example, eight thousand dodge all around. Uh, but um, it's you, you could basically hit them every time with really high hit rate. Like my Serenity's hit rate is super high. It's 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 almost sixty percent. Um, but the way that I have her built is or all my characters built is i'm aiming for all swords all chess pieces and i really don't care about the accessories at all um if it's a tank then i would want uh, i would still want a, a, at least one of the attack uh, mastery pieces because i want to have high mastery uh it, now how many pieces that you need for the mastery is going to depend on your base sets for your character. Look up what their base mastery is on a grid. That way you know how many of these things to equip. Because the attack that they give is negligible uh, compared to how much the attack is going to go up by the percent of HP potential if you can get that. That's what you're hoping for. A piece of gear that has the attack by HP potential is always going to be better than one of these attack pieces. Even if the attack gives more attack at the time, it won't always give more depending on how late you are into the game. Plus, you get the added effects of having, for example, extra crit and hit rate, uh, which are always fantastic, or extra HP and defense, which are also fantastic. Um, uh, but, uh, where am I going here? Um, uh, with with uh, Serendi here, I, I think I've got a fairly good build to her. Uh, the sets that I have on her, though, to be honest, they were just because I had nowhere else to put them. It's not like I've got these sets. These are great sets for Serendi. It's just, they'd be great sets for anybody. I think that the movement one is the only one that really gives her a strong uh, uh, presence on the board. <coughs> uh, but you can basically use whatever you want uh, for gear. Uh, the main thing I'm trying to get across in these videos is that your potentials are basically law. If you get crappy potentials on your gear, don't bother leveling them up. If you get good potentials on your gear, go for it. And you might have to reroll some pieces. You, you can't always get good potentials. Like you can buy tons of gear and just not get a single piece that has uh, an accessory with an increased attack by percent of HP. That could happen. Um, so try again. <laughs> or hope you get some potions to reroll the stats. It doesn't matter how good the stats are. Reroll the worst ones first and prioritize them in the way to make the, the get the most uh, stats out of your characters. Uh, but uh, for Serendi, I found that a high hit rate and a high crit rate are, are really great for her because she her her attack she's strong, she's very strong, but her skills not really that particularly amazing. Like it's a, a lot of characters. I think it's one ninety something. Yeah, so one hundred and ninety percent. So it's the same damage as Kai, but Kai's ignoring four thousand some defense. Uh, her passive is fantastic. Um, for the two movement and the extra uh, extra nine percent and ten percent whatever it is percent attack what's what's going up by one uh, all right so it's fourteen percent attack uh, more uh, she's got a fantastic passive so all these things if you can get some crit on her so she can throw some crits down then she could basically be going around one shotting people instead of uh, charming them uh, she could definitely take out the average Chenny um, being a rock Chenny being super super popular right now and Serendi having just amazing amazing utility. Uh, definitely the best character utility wise in the game uh, what's nice about uh, Serendi is that if maybe your opponent's second slot hero uh, let's say it's Cleo get some confuse or charm on your uh, third slot hero 
uh, and like the lane map, for example. Uh, Serenity's also got the remove debuff uh, skill, which could be pretty, pretty damn handy if if you don't think that Serenity is good enough to take out character in one shot, or she does just doesn't have good position, then she can go help another character. Like she's got infinite utility and infinite abilities, uh, for how just awesome that she is. Uh, but for her gear, I'd say that putting uh, as much defense as you can on would be great because she doesn't really have that great defense. Uh, not that you can't build it that way, just that I, I, like mine doesn't have good defense. <laughs> I probably just have bad uh, defense potentials on her. Um, but she's basically going to be one of those characters that you're going to want her to strike first. Extra movement is always the best. Uh, and anything that you can do to sort of give yourself a better chance... Uh, for her to activate on more than one opponent, uh, like movement is is just invaluable on Serenity. Anyway, going to be going over to Bearman, the monster of monsters. Uh, now, what I like about my Bearman is the only set that I have on him is the the set that increases his aggro um, uh, by quite a lot, actually. Uh, I've got some pretty fantastic potentials on my Bearman, and uh, his stats are are completely outrageous. If we want to take a look at him now, my hit rate's fairly low on him, so that's one thing I should probably be working on. Uh, just going into the future, uh, maybe lose, um, maybe lose some mastery and attack uh, for uh, some hit and crit rate uh, on a ring, uh, for example. Uh, but other than that, I'm pretty damn happy with all his stats. I'd like maybe if I could get an extra movement on him, it would be pretty awesome too. Uh, but like, I I don't have any. Uh, um, extra swords lying around and I don't have any uh, uh, extra really good r rings lying around with good potentials. Like I said, I prioritize the potentials over everything because I'm looking to maximize the amount of stats I can get for everybody. Uh, but I have so many spots open for more gear sets uh, on this character. I really, really, really love an Aldrika's Trinity. I would love it so much, even though I got, look at this, look at this sword. Isn't this thing amazing? Damn, it's amazing. If only that counter damage percent was hit rate, I would, I would be, sorry, uh, not hit rate, uh, I already got hit rate. <laughs> if only it was uh, <coughs> a crit rate or something like that, that would be fantastic. Basically perfect. And make it pink while we're at it and change this damage to pink too. Uh, but uh, Bear Man's one of those characters that because his flat age, he's got the highest base HP in the game, he's going to be benefiting the most from a lot of these potentials. Uh, and you got to stop thinking of things uh, as the percentages and the increases and whatever. Uh, a lot of people don't think base stats matter. A hero with higher base stats naturally will have higher flat increases by these percent effects. And their total flat amounts are going to be a lot higher. 2.7% of 50,000 and 2.7% of 70,000 are obviously different amounts. And you're going to need to have this, uh, the the idea of the percentages increases uh, being greater amounts, but you're going to have to keep the uh, your head uh, stuck in the thought that it's the flat amount that it turns into that's the important number. And the best way and the easiest way to maximize that is just to use good characters. Characters have good stats and the things that you're looking for raise the, those heroes. Uh, I did some research myself. I found Bear Man was a monstrous tank. And uh, people actually criticized me in the chat at first when I said I was going to use them. Everybody was saying Jack was way better. And I'm like, I, Jack has terrible stats. <laughs> I don't, like his HP drain is cool and all if the boss has a million health, but you know, the average player's only got 60, 70, well, in my bear man's case, with Jack's attacking my bear man, that's fine, because my bear man has almost 100,000 health. But Jack doesn't do particularly good anything. Um, I, I had actually rather use Chris, because Chris, at least, when she attacks somebody, she guarantees that the defense is going to be lowered by a huge amount for three turns, for example. Uh, Jack is kind of a, a one-trick pony to me for PvE bosses, and, th and that's about it. And the problem that I have with him is that you really don't need Jack to beat any boss in the game. If you can't beat a boss because you don't have Jack, your party's probably just not strong enough to begin with. 
uh, which people are learning a lot from Tower 50 right now, where Jack is completely useless. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, running long on this video too, so I'm going to be cutting it off in a second. Uh, but uh, 